Welcome to this week's episode of Duchenne Science Live. My name's Neil. And my name's Sid. And this week we're going to be looking at a paper from the University of Missouri in the US, where they've been detailing some of the, some of the symptoms seen in a, a female dog with mutations in both copies of the dystrophin gene. So we'll talk a little bit about what they find, but most importantly about what that means for carriers and for families of people living with Duchenne. We should probably say that in Duchenne, the, the dog model is one of the, I guess, more, maybe not widely used, but it's, it's one of the most regularly used in terms of testing things before they move to, to clinical trials. Obviously, there's the, the mouse model, which mm -hmm. is probably, it doesn't totally mimic what you might see in humans. So the dog, I think, probably mirrors better what you actually see in, in humans living with Duchenne. So yes. it's a really useful model. And they've tested things like the gene therapies that are in clinical trials. Mm -hmm. uh, they were tested in, in the dog model. So, so it really is a, a useful model. I think it's probably important we say that. They had a particular dog. She's a, uh, about 10 months old. And that is you, past the point where you, you might imagine symptoms to pop up in certainly in the male dogs. Um, and she suddenly died. And they wanted to know why, because that's incredibly important. Was it to do with potentially the muscular dystrophy condition, the, what was going on for her? Um, or is it something else that, within the colony of dogs that they needed to know about? So that's why they investigated and they um, looked at her muscle tissues um, in biopsy, so skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle, and saw that there were there was damage, there was um, fatty deposits, there was a um, uh, a lot of it was um, was absent. It hadn't it had been lost. I mean, so great muscle wastage. Yeah, it, it's very close to what you would see in in a person living with Duchenne, isn't it? It's you know okay. muscle damage, and of course the big finding was that there was no dystrophin in the muscles. Yeah, so they did. Yeah, so they looked at that. Uh, they looked at the mute, um, the genetics of this uh, female dog and discovered that she had um, not one but two different mutations in the dystrophin gene because she's a female she's got two x chromosomes dystrophin gene is found on the x chromosome and in one um there was a mutation in the dystrophin gene of one type um and in her in the other x chromosome there was a, a, a mutation of a different type so she's actually inherited two different uh dystrophin mutations so um she uh in that sense she's Heterozygous is that is because the, the the genes are different. It, so heterozygous it, is just two different versions of the same gene. The same gene, exactly. So, but she's called compound heterozygous because compound, as in both copies have a mutation. Yes. As so, opposed yeah. to one having no mutation and one having one, she had two, which is unusual. And of course, that's what you would see in the vast majority of females is people with one copy of the gene with a mutation and the other copy without a mutation. Whereas here we're dealing with a, a female that's actually got two different mutations, one on each chromosome. Mm -hmm. So unable to make dystrophin or at least unable to make full length dystrophin. The interesting thing for us is, is not so much the compound heterozygote or the, you know, the, the two mutations in, in the female dog, it's kind of thinking about that and thinking about some of the questions we get asked by families. Cause I know, you know, often we're asked, you know, like, I think like probably lots and lots of other charities, we say that most cases of Duchenne happen in boys or in young men. Mm -hmm. And we're often asked whether, whether girls can have Duchenne. And, and it's a really tricky question. If a male has a mutation in their only copy of the dystrophin gene, they'll they'll have a condition. Mm -hmm. It might be Duchenne, it might be Becker because they're mm -hmm. both caused by mutations in the same gene. Mm -hmm. If a female has a a mutation in one of those genes, females inherit two different X chromosomes. So X, um, just to wind that back a bit. So um, so uh, we have twenty three pairs. Of chromosomes, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's right. <laughs> in humans, so and then 22 pairs of them are just are just numbered. Pair 23 is are uh, the sex chromosomes um, um, so X and Y, and um, females 
tend to have two X's and males tend to have X and Y. The key thing is that the Y chromosome is much, much smaller, isn't it? So, yeah. so there's a great deal more genetic information in the X chromosome, simply because it's bigger. But we don't need two copies of it. So in females, one of the um, X chromosomes inside the nucleus of the cell is, is mothballed. It's wrapped up in um, protein and, it's, and it's, it's put on ice. It doesn't, it's not actively used for anything. Yeah. So, uh, so that's called X in inactivation. So that's so only one uh, of the X chromosomes in a cell in a female is going to be actually actively used for anything to code anything. And I think normally you'd say that you know when you're talking about diseases and conditions, if someone's got the mutation that could cause the disease and they're a carrier, then you wouldn't expect to see symptoms in that person. But because Duchenne's an excellent condition, it's it's not quite that simple. Yes, so, so this X linkage, because of the randomness of X inactivation and, and also the variability uh, of Duchenne, it might be that, this, that the X inactivation, uh, which happens super early on, ball of cell uh, you know, stage of, of life, really, really early on, but any cell that then and then whatever cell lines go on, that is any cell that is descended from those early cells, which, you know, everything will be, but, uh, um, will, ca will have the same X chromosome um, inactivated. Yes, it's entirely yeah. random at the beginning, but after yeah. that, yeah. every cell remembers what its, yeah. what its yeah. parent cell had done. Yeah, yeah, the same, and it follows on. So it could be that a carrier might have um, the dystrophin gene um, well, with the mutation if we, if we, being... If we talk, it, if we talk yeah. about that ball of cells first, when there's that oh, little yeah. ball of cells, yeah, and let's say there's 10 cells, because mm. that's a, it's probably quite an unlikely number from a developmental biology point of view, but uh, <laughs> but it's okay. a nice easy number for math. Okay, good. all right, we'll, that we'll, that. Uh, yeah. we'll stick with it. So mm -hmm. if there's 10 cells, it's entirely random, you'd expect five cells to, to turn off the X chromosome that has a mutation, five cells to turn off the one that doesn't have a mutation. Mm. That's what you'd expect. It could be two turning off the mutated copy and eight not, or the other way around. It's entirely random. So It is entirely random. So, you know, it's 50-50 it's, it's for each individual cell. So, uh, you know, the, the cells will go on to develop certain types of, certain types of, uh, cells and tissues and organs and what in, as, uh, further down the line. So things like the spinal cord and and the, and the neural networks they develop from you know one line lineage of cells etc etc. But effectively, what you end up with at the end is a almost a body that's a patchwork of those original cells, I guess, isn't it? Because yeah. if those cells are making the decision yeah. and it yeah. spreads out, yeah, yeah. So we talk about a mosaic, and we can see evidence for this in. Um, of, if you look at genes that are X-linked, that are found on the X chromosome, that give you an effect that you can, you know, see or you know, observe in some way. A great example of this in nature is um, the tortoiseshell cat, because tortoiseshells um, are nearly all, almost always female. Now, there's lots of genes involved in the um, in the colour and patterning of cats' fur. Um, but there's one particular one that is found on the X chromosome, and that is the one that uh, codes for um, orange pigment. It's either it's, it's either present or absent. Um, so you've either got a gene that is going to make the pigment or not um, on the X chromosome. So in uh, female cats, so they inherit their two X chromosomes. They might inherit a copy of the marmalade gene on one, and um, not a copy of it on their other X chromosome, and this will be randomly turned on and off. And so in the tortoiseshell, you get this wonderful patchwork of orangey bits and dark pigmented bits in a total mosaic pattern. It and like the, the line down the middle of the nose is quite striking, isn't it? That's, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so that patch of cells has come from one cell line and, and the other patch of cells has come from other cell lines. So it's, it just shows you this mosaic -y random nature of, of which X chromosome is turned on and off. So, and, um, yeah. and carriers of Duchenne 
it's yeah. exactly the same, isn't it? So, you know, a female carrier will have or could have muscles that have some dystrophin and other muscles that don't have dystrophin. And, and it, you know, if you could look at the muscles like you can look at a cat and see what color it is, mm. you'd be able to see that patchwork in the muscles mm -hmm. and, you know, see this mosaicism in the muscle. Yeah. And, and what that means is carriers experience very, very different symptoms mm -hmm. because at, at one end, somebody might have 100% of their cells making 100% of the dystrophin you'd expect. And at the other end, somebody might, those cells might all have inactivated the, the gene that didn't have a mutation. So all the muscle cells are unable to make dystrophin. Mm -hmm. And, and in Duchenne, those symptoms that you see in carriers, they're called, well, I mean, they're called manifestations, but actually the, the people that, that have those symptoms are called manifesting carriers. Mm -hmm. And it literally means carriers who, who manifest the condition, carriers who have symptoms. And if we go back to the, the kind of original question I asked, whether girls can have Duchenne, because I know that's the, yes. it's the tricky question, I suppose. I mean, the answer is yes, they can, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the dog we started off talking about today had two two different mutations on the two copies of the X chromosome. Mm -hmm. That could happen in in a person, and that would that would be Duchenne because that person is unable to make any dystrophin in in any muscle. Mm -hmm. But actually, the vast majority of females who have symptoms, they're carriers, they're manifesting carriers. Mm -hmm. But the symptoms they experience might be really similar to somebody who who's living with Duchenne there's, there's because it's a random process yes because because there's this huge variability um inherent in that random on and off of of the x chromosomes so yeah. where where they where they have lack where they're lacking in dystrophin is is it's going to be hugely variable so in that sense it, it looks like the same condition it's only genetically does it differ and that's important yes. and helpful to understand that because being a carrier is different because um, actually uh, there's always a chance no. that that mosaic mm -hmm. might not be affecting all the muscles mm -hmm. you know so somebody might get early symptoms equivalent to somebody living with duchenne but mm -hmm. maybe some of the heart muscle is still able to produce some dystrophin it's you know you, you can't go looking for dystrophin in well, I suppose you, it's very difficult to go looking for dystrophin in the muscles so mm. so it's important to know if you're a carrier or or not because actually the prognosis might be different it's it's very very difficult to say for sure but it, it's it's absolutely possible mm. so um in terms of you know the health and well-being of carriers it uh the the idea of knowing that you are a carrier is so that your health can be monitored and, and probably um, the the most important thing is probably to monitor people's heart health yes i, I think that's because, the yeah you know, that's I mean, certainly part of the standards of care and so mm -hmm. so carrier testing is something that everybody should should consider and it's something that everybody should be offered in the uk shortly after diagnosis you should be offered carrier testing or the mum should be offered carrier testing Yes, so it's going to be um, for the females uh, in yeah. the family, so mothers and then potentially you know, sisters or her mother, et cetera, et cetera. So you're looking at the females because that's that's they are going to be could be the carriers. Exactly, and if you find a carrier, it's not not unusual to kind of expand to talk, as you say, to or to talk to aunties, grandmas to try and work out everyone who's a carrier because there's still it's still useful to be able to monitor those people even if they're they're not going to have children mm -hmm. and actually having more children is the the other reason some people like to know if they're a carrier or not because it lets them it lets them make more more informed family planning choices mm -hmm. for the future and actually it's probably really important that we say that you know you, you should be able to to receive genetic counseling as part of this process it's having having tests for for genetic mutations that you might carry it's it's not something to be necessarily undertaken lightly i think it's fair to say so no. i think getting access to genetic counseling is is really important especially if you're thinking about 
whether to have maybe a young daughter tested or something because often if the mother's a carrier then you know younger members of the family might be offered carrier testing mm -hmm. and there's lots and lots of ethical implications in that you know yeah. should you wait should you get the test done that's yeah. so there's there's lots to think about talk about you know maybe lots of questions that come up and the idea of genetic counseling is to have support and go through that process with somebody who, who can help you. Excellent. Uh, it's an yeah. interesting show this week, isn't it? We started off with a paper about a dog. Yeah, in a, in a, in a university in, in Missouri and ended up talking through mm -hmm. all the kind of issues that carriers might face and some of the challenges around being a carrier of Duchenne. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quite yeah. Fun when you see where a paper can lead you. Yeah. And so, and so we're still not sure what paper we'll be looking at next week. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to pick a, an up to date paper. So it, yes, yes. Cause I mean, this paper only came out at, um, I think this one came out. Was it last end of week? Month. Yeah. So mm -hmm. hopefully next week's will be equally up to date. So if you see something published this week or last week, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that you want us to cover just let us know in the comments we'll we'll look the paper up and uh yeah see if we can do a show on it next week or or the week after yeah. depending on how on how sure. complicated it is as i say we're trying to respond to what you know the latest sort of things published that are relevant to uh people living with duchenne and their families so that's uh, we shall see what comes out next exactly um, so we'll we'll see you next week for the next the next exciting episode yeah.